Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 151 of the RRBG podcast. As we are all still living under the pandemic lockdown, a lot of our sponsors are unable to provide promo codes. However, a lot of them are still open and providing special pricing. So I wanted to give a shout out to some of our sponsors. Please check out Thunder King Coffee. Go to thunderkingcoffee.com. They're selling all of their coffee at wholesale price right now. And they ship all over the U.S. Also check out Saints Joints. Go to saintsjoints.com. They're currently selling 100% CBD joints available for shipping across the U.S. wherever it's legal. And you can support them by picking up some merch as well. I also want to give a shout out to Hella Hot Hot Sauce. They're shipping as well. So please make sure to go to their website, hellahothotsauce.com, and pick some up today. And I wanted to give a special shout out to our buddies over at Cosmic Eye Brewing. Breweries are especially struggling during these times as they are unable to sell kegs to these restaurants and bars that are closed down. But they are still open and making beers. If you're in the Nebraska area, you can stop by for pickup or go to their website, cosmiceye.beer, and check out all the merchandise they have available online for purchase. And you can order online for pickup as well. In this episode, I talked to Morgan Lander of Kitty. We talk about her joining the death metal outfit Car Chaos. We talk about her new electronic project, Winterlust. We talked a lot about horror movies and dealing with the quarantine. It was a great conversation. Don't forget to check out her podcast, Witch Finger, where she talks about horror movies. Make sure to check out the new Car Chaos and keep an eye out for her new project, Winterlust, when that launches. You can follow her on social media at Dial M for Morgan. And please don't forget to check out the Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash RRBG to support. Cheers. Hello. There we go. How are things? Oh, they're going. <laughs> how, are, yep. how are things for you? <laughs> Pretty good. I can't complain. Just, uh, you know, stuck inside the house like the rest of the world, pretty much. It's so crazy. It's such yep. a crazy Strange time times. right now. <laughs> yeah. Strange um, times what indeed. Have, what have you been doing to, uh, to stay, I guess, sane during this time? Um, working on some music stuff, uh, reading a lot, like I've been reading a lot more, I've probably read more books in the last month and a half than I have in the last like five years. So that's really cool. Um, doing a lot of like fitness, just, yeah, sitting in the backyard when it's nice, just trying nice. to, you know, be in the moment, I guess, try not to go too crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's you know, every time I turn the news on, it just keeps getting freakier and freakier, and I'm just, I, I'm not really much, I'm I'm not that type of person to sit around looking at the news and like, oh, what, you know, I guess the president says we should do this, like, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> what, in, in, inject disinfectant? <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, go it's ahead, crazy. just drink it, uh, snort it, whatever you. Yeah. Uh, it kills the virus it. within 30 seconds, why not? It sounds so yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah oh my gosh well yeah survival of the fittest i guess we'll see right right uh what what so you've been reading what's the most recent book you read um i actually read finished reading a book called cauldron of blood <laughs> um, sounds wholesome it's about yeah it's about um the uh it was a true crime book actually um my mom got it for me because she was talking about the this cauldron that you know it's a, like some voodoo kind of stuff um and there was a cult in matamoros uh mexico that was involved with um like some cartels and stuff like that and they they uh, ended up in imprisoning um a kid who was like uh had gone across the border like with his friends for spring break or whatever and they like tortured him and they ended up like eating his brains and crazy crazy stuff like yeah, like to, for rituals and stuff, and so they sacrificed him. So yeah, that was uh, that was the last book that I read. It was uh, very heartwarming. Very heartwarming, very yeah. sweet. <laughs> yes. And I wonder about that if if that's still something that goes on in like undiscovered locations in the jungle, like if there's some oh, crazy probably. like tribes yeah, that are. Yeah, like 
Definitely. I think so. Um, like, uh, this book in particular, like, they go into a lot of the details about, like, the origins of stuff, like, because it does involve some, some Santeria, but then also, like, some of the more, like, you know, nefarious and deeper kinds of, uh, religions that do involve, like, animal sacrifice and also human sacrifices and stuff like that, and it apparently originated in Africa, uh, millennia ago, and it's just something that's sort of morphed and changed over over the years so uh there's probably still people that are doing it yeah i mean obviously there's still a lot of people that do santeria like my my family i grew i grew up around it so it's absolutely uh, yeah yeah i I always found it so fascinating because it i don't believe in it i don't practice it Mm -hmm. but it it seems to work like it seems to work for them like i've seen Mm. like my mother would do weird ritual things and then whatever she was doing it for would happen like they, yeah. she would like put a curse on someone and then they would lose their job or something yeah. bad would happen i'm like oh my yeah. god <laughs> yeah like pray to St. barbara and like you know good things happen right she yeah. actually had a, a when i was growing up she had a huge uh santa barbara uh like statue and she would attach uh real human hair to it, her own hair that she would cut mm-hmm. and then like, oh, wow. tape it she would tape it onto the the little statue as a as an offering, as a you know, mm. uh, for whatever it is, and then you know stuff would happen. And there was always food laying around the house. They would they would have like uh, yeah. plates of food sacrificed. You know, I'd be hungry. I'd snack on it. And she's like, "You're gonna get cursed." It's like, <laughs> it's fresh fruit. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you believe in, in, in any particular, like, uh, I mean, I know you have the, the podcast, the, the, you know, that you, it's called Witch Finger, but I don't know if yes. you consider yourself a witch. No, no, I would say no. <laughs> okay. uh, no, I don't really, subs- I don't subscribe to any, uh, any particular religion. Uh, okay. I wouldn't call myself a witch, but uh, the podcast that we do is pretty fun. Yeah. Bad well, you guys review my religion. Yeah, you, I was going to say, you, re- you review, like, horror movies and... Uh, with your yeah. friends, they, yeah, how, yeah. How, why, uh, why, why horror movies specifically? What, what brings you to that? Um, well, something that I definitely uh, grew up with. Like, I have a lot of uh, nostalgic um, memories of like you know Friday or Saturday night. Like, my parents would like order pizza, and then we'd get to go to the move the video store because I'm old. You know, it was the video store, like the buying going out to rent VHS and um, the particular uh, place that we would rent movies from uh, was called Jumbo Video and uh, the horror section was actually like a castle uh, Mm. inside so you'd walk through the spooky castle and then pick your horror movie and we would always I don't know we always gravitated towards uh, horror Uh, the covers were always like really like they always jumped out at you I think a lot more than um a lot of other movies at the time, uh, I guess, you know, there was a lot of uh, intense artwork and kind of scary imagery and stuff. And I think a lot of times kids are either really, really afraid of it or intrigued by it. And uh, my sister and I were the latter. So, um, you know, I have even like growing up, I've seen like a lot of movies I probably shouldn't have seen. Maybe it warped my mind a little. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. Um, but uh it's something that is kind of deeply ingrained in me and uh i i enjoy the badness um so yeah we just decided i guess we're coming up on maybe four years now of the podcast we haven't actually done anything since uh since all of this pandemic stuff has gone on we're trying to figure out a way to maybe try to do some you know uh recording of ourselves while everybody's sort of in there in their place or whatever but yeah horror is just something I, I grew up with and i i love it and we have such a good time uh with the podcast you know we drink some beers and we watch a bad movie we do a little bit of research and just like laugh and it's great that's awesome man that's yeah. awesome uh, uh do you remember just the like when you were a child the first because i think you and i are the same age i think if i'm not mistaken but uh i remember jason being the very first kind of horror um that little it, was it jason with the ch- 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 yeah yeah jason, yeah right? friday the 13th yeah right 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 so that was the first time i remember being scared and yeah I, and, and you know, like, I know my, my parents were watching and i remember hiding behind the couch like with that sound and i was like yeah. what is that so what would that be for for you 
uh, what like that that really scary scary movie. Um, I, this is gonna sound crazy, but uh, I have a memory like that with the movie called Doctor Giggles, <laughs> which okay. is about okay. a doctor that kills people, I guess. Um, Doctor Giggles, okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we, we we rented this movie, and um, my uncle was visiting, and he actually like was wa- we were all like watching it as a family, and my sister and I were very scared, but he actually had like snuck away and gone upstairs, and then come back downstairs and like hid behind the couch, and then jumped out of this with the Doctor Giggles laugh, and like I still to this day I'm like, oh my god, like this movie is terrifying because of that, um, but like no like. I, I don't ever recall being, like, actually afraid. I think maybe the Terminator, the first Terminator movie, did give me some nightmares when I was a kid. Um, I, have, I have a vivid, like, I had a vivid dream that I can still remember of the Terminator chasing me. I might have been, like, I don't know, four or five years old. <laughs> so it's not really yeah. a horror, but it is pretty, it's a pretty horrific idea, right? So as a child, sure, like yeah. a relentless thing that's just trying to kill you, it's pretty scary. Yeah, no, I, I and it's pretty gory. Like I recently rewatched it with my wife because she had never seen it. And mm-hmm. I, she, oh, wow, had, really? Like, yeah, she was like, oh, I heard so much of Terminator, I've never watched them. Like we're watching all of them. <laughs> that's, what's, yeah. that's what's happening. And uh, the, the first one is very, very, like the, the, the effects that they use, they have like a fake Arnold. Like yeah, puppet. when he's like in the mirror and it like looks a little bit like it looks ca- like, wrong. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look right. Yeah. So yeah, it's I could see weird. as a child being traumatized by it. Like I remember, I do remember it being scary. I remember yeah, watching yeah. it and not feeling not feeling good uh, when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So that one, that one also was pretty scary for me. Yeah, I grew up. I grew up watching a ton of movies. My parents bought a, a video store in New Jersey uh, when I was a kid. So I would spend a lot of my time just in the store watching movies. And then I would also help them fake, uh, sub not fake, but I would add subtitles to movies because it was in oh. a predominant, yeah, it was in a predominantly like uh, Latino neighborhood and a lot mm. of the movies weren't available. So my, my father bought a machine where we would just sit there and type it out and add it to the oh, movie. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't actually know that that, that was possible. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know the technology. I, if you were to ask me what it was, I have no idea. Yeah. I just know he had a <laughs> he had a machine, and then he would make a copy of the movie that had the subtitles, Subtitle. and we would rent them out. Yeah. That is really cool. I'm gonna have to look into that because that's something that I I didn't I didn't realize. I actually do have a copy of a movie that is a closed captioned uh, movie, and I'm not just I'm not sure if it's if it's like just English subtitles. It's closed caption for hearing impaired, um, but it is a, a VHS. I have just have never put it on. Like I've seen the movie, but I've just never put that particular copy on. So now I'm very curious. Yeah, yeah, it's a. Yeah. You learn something fun. new. <laughs> it was. It was. You know, I. I. I'm happy that I grew up in that environment too, because I mean, I got to see a ton of movies that normally people wouldn't have seen. Just like really yeah. obscure. I wish my memory was better and I could remember all of them, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of just obscure horror movies. Like the one that stands out the most, it's it's kind of you know it's not that obscure anymore. It's kind of a cult classic. Would be like uh, the Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah, that's a great movie. I remember I remember renting that one as a kid too, and uh, we actually did uh, that on the podcast maybe oh, nice. like three years ago. Yeah, now we're starting to get into the you know the real bad stuff. So you know, eventually you run out of of good horror movies, and then. All you're left yeah. with is the shit. You gotta keep going. <laughs> I, I, you know, more more than ever, the the more recent horror movies don't do it for me. Like they they're pretty bad, and not in the good cheesy bad kind of way. Just kind of yeah, just not well done. And it's it's hard for me to feel. And I don't know if that's in part due to me being desensitized from so many years of horror movies and yeah. terrible things happening uh, that it takes. It doesn't really do much for me a horror movie these days. Mm-hmm. It has to be, it has to be psychologically traumatizing for me to be, you know, kind of like, ugh, I don't want, I don't want to see that anymore. Yeah, well, I haven't caught up too, too much on like a lot of new stuff. Like every, every so often, something will come along and be like, you know, this is a great, uh, a great new movie. Um, the one that uh, comes to mind just right off the top of my head that's like kind of new I would get say maybe in the last four or five years is It Follows have you seen that 
No, I have not. I but think it has it's on this, Netflix still. I've been wanting. I've been meaning to watch it because uh, my buddy uh, Richard did this, the soundtrack. The, um, oh yeah, the disaster piece. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah, yeah. soundtrack is incredible. Um, yeah. But yeah, that actually that movie um, is one of those movies that like comes along every now every so often, like in terms of newer horror. It's also like kind of suspense and stuff, but um, it's very, very well done. And it's like, I would say there's some psychological elements as well. So I think if that's kind of what you're into, then that would be, I would recommend that one. Um, yeah. And it's on Netflix. So might yeah, as well. that's going to be, that's going up on the list. Cause I, I, I've been list. meaning, <laughs> I've been meaning to watch it forever since, you know, since I had a uh, Richard on the podcast and we were talking mm -hmm. about it and, I'm like, oh, I'll check it out. I don't really like horror movies anymore. I used to. But I, I just, I miss the old school, you know, the villain, uh, the character. Like, you know, you had yeah. Freddy. You had, you know, Pinhead like, on yeah. your shirt. You have, uh, know, you know, Michael fun. Myers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. There, that, that really yeah. doesn't exist right now like, in horror movies. It's all remakes of those guys or something else. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, uh, uh, there are a lot of remakes, and I think there there's too many of them now. Like, it's like every time they, uh, someone you know, like production company announces like, oh, they're going to like remake like the craft or they're going to remake this movie and everybody just rolls their eyes. And it's like, well, what's wrong with the original one? So yeah. I, I do understand that. Like it is harder and harder to come up with, you know, new and original ideas as well. But like, you know, there is a lot of great stuff out there that's new, but I do understand the nostalgia of, you know, like, you know, uh, like, actual special effects like tangible effects monsters you know that kind of thing all the gore you know like cgi blood and stuff is just you know it just doesn't CGI have the same everything. impact yeah cgi everything like the 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 like star wars you know we we saw that happen where they started heading in the cgi direction and all of a sudden mm. they're like nah let's go back to the puppets because yeah it's just much exactly. better exactly <laughs> They are, they are. And I mean, yeah. the technology now is even, even better than what it was, but it's amazing what, you know, the thing, some of the things that they were able to do in the eighties with just like models and, and puppets and stuff like that. Like a perfect example is aliens. Like mm. the sets of aliens, it are incredible. Like James Cameron did such an amazing job. And uh, like a lot of this stuff is just models. It's all like forced perspective and stuff like that. And I just think that's, it's genius. Yeah, it requires yeah. to me. To me, it requires more work. Which I always, I'm, a, I'm just a fan of that. Like the more work you put in, the better it's going to be. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. that obviously, computer programmers and, and people sitting in a computer, you know, designing this stuff isn't work. It's yeah, just of not course. the same. It's not the same as as you know building building out a set or building out a, a puppet that make sure that it looks real. And yeah, you know, I, 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 I watch documentaries of those old like. Um, Oh, what's his name? Tom Savini, like you know, yeah. sitting there crafting like each little individual eyebrow hair. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, those type of things are are way more interesting to me than yeah, just doing it on a computer. For sure, it's it is like it's it's still art, like the CGI and the computer effects. It's still art, but it's just a different medium. And I and sometimes I think you know, uh, you know, pa painters and sculptors and stuff. It's just like a certain a certain extra thing that you need to have that kind of talent right like yeah. you might be able to like you know uh create something in like a computer but like could you sculpt that in real right. life do you know what i mean it's it's just two two very different things yeah and i hope it doesn't go away uh it, you know it, you see less and less of it as technology advances and it makes things easier to just go the cg route but i yeah. hope there's still people going out there and trying to do it by hand because it's also it's relevant to music too. Like, <clears throat> you know, if you, if your music is entirely sequenced or, you know, just programmed on a computer, it it never really registers with me as much as if you had a band with with instruments performing. Mm. You know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, that is uh, it's a whole other topic, but at the same time, it, yeah. it does kind of it does kind of relate. Um, and even the same thing is like you know, whole, like, you know, people just like home studios and like, you know, doing everything in like acts effects, like just mm. having one little thing to like do everything. Whereas like, you know, the full studio experience of like, you know, miking up all of your amps and like moving everything around and like, it is a little bit different. Um, I don't know. I think uh, like, I'm glad that technology has made things easier for people because it's allowed more people to be able to 
to, you know, make professional recordings and get their music out there and, you know, whatever project they want to do, that's great. But there is something magical about, you know, that old school studio experience as well. It's just, it's, it's just unfortunate that, you know, it's like, you know, uh, it's not always as cost effective, you know, as, right. as it should be. Right. Or yeah. like, cause like, you know, back in the day, you know, you spent like a month in the studio and, you know, the label had lots and lots of money to pay for it. And that just mm -hmm. doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no labels. I mean, they're labels, but they're not doing what they used to do in terms of support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, now the support is more after the fact, more, Hey, your album's done. Cool. Let's push it out. Let's send yeah. out, you know, <laughs> yeah. And you've gone Let's and you've done vinyl. the album yourself. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're shopping the full album. So they, they don't really even have to do any of that, which I mean, it's just a different, you just gotta, you have to roll with the, the, the times, you know, things are different, you know, things have scaled down you just have to find other ways other means of making money and getting your music out there and you know accessing fans and being in touch right yeah and it's even you know times have changed recently this whole quarantine situation has got mm. people kind of scrambling trying to figure out new ways to make an income because a lot of a lot of musicians don't have the opportunity to tour uh, yeah which is like one of the biggest you know revenue streams for bands I oh my say. god i know like it's it's devastating it really really is like i i a lot of my friends are musicians and i know people that have like canceled gigs into the end of the summer because it's like well we just don't know and you know maybe things will maybe things will be opened back up again in july but then is that enough time to give people to like feel comfortable going to shows again too because it's like one thing to say okay we're back in business, you know, life is heading back to normal, but are people going to feel comfortable, you know, going from being sequestered in their home alone to going to a show where there might be 500 people there, you know, like, are they going to mm. feel comfortable and okay with that? I think it's going to be a, a transition. I think it's going to take a long time for people to want to gather again uh, mm. in that capacity. Um, but yeah, yeah, so it's, it's interesting that, you know, uh, but it, it also shows the resourcefulness of of artists you know like I've seen uh, people all of a sudden like switching on a dime and like their merch stores now have masks and it's like you know everybody everybody you know is looking for them and it's very very interesting that all of a sudden you know people are just like all right cool now we've got masks to sell that have you know our band logo or or whatever and I don't know I think it's pretty cool and the the, uh, the you know together apart type uh, concerts as well. I think they're a really cool thing. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, I've I've been impressed with some of the resourcefulness, uh, some of the yeah. ideas that have come out of this. Um, I think Slipknot's wasting time right now. They should be putting out masks. Um, yeah, like full masks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But but yeah, no, that that is you know, it's cool to see that. I like to see the the Twitch streaming. I like to see one thing that I've been seeing a lot of is um, not a lot, but I've seen it. Um, collaborative, like people from different bands getting together on Zoom or something yeah. and doing doing a cover of a song mm, or something. That like, is like, really, I know really cool. Yeah, like Chelsea Wolf and uh, my buddy Liam and a couple people did a Crazy Train, but like I saw dark, that. Yeah, like a spooky one, and, and I love that. Yeah, that was that was actually really really cool. Um, well, for like for for me, we haven't really like. Uh, with my new band, Car Chaos, we have we're we're slowly trying to figure some stuff out. Uh, uh, so I think we might kind of do a couple things. It just depends on how long this is going to go on for. Like, is this going to be like two, three more months? Like, who knows? Yeah. Well, like you like you pointed out, it, it's going to be a while even after they reopen because, like you yeah. said, pe people are not going to rush. There's going to be a rush of some people, and I, I, <laughs> I would say it's the same people that. Um, like the people that make dumb decisions, like, uh, I'm going to have seven kids, even though I don't have a job. Like, the, the, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, those people are going to run out and go yeah. out and like, you know, get sick and, and, or, or maybe not get sick, but just kind of endanger themselves. Cause they don't really think things through, but anybody that's thinking at all about their health or, or their family's health, mm -hmm. they're not going to just run out. I'm not going to no. run out. You know? No, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and there are people that are doing that right now. Like the recommendations are like, you know, social distancing, stay home. But like, 
you know, people are still out walking around and stuff like that. Like, um, you know, there are, there are people that are not really, you know, following those guidelines, you know, very, very strictly. Like people are still gathering in the park, you know, mm. you know, a lot of people are like, well, you can't tell me what to do. You know, I'm still going to go and meet with my friends or whatever. So, you know, those, those are the people that are going to maybe brush it out and who knows, you know, maybe yeah. they still don't take it seriously, but yeah. Uh, you mentioned, uh, I'm trying to, I say car chaos. Yeah, what? that's it. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So car chaos, yeah. uh, you and you guys, you recently joined like, like last year. Yes. Yes. Okay. Correct. But the band has been around for, uh, a number of years and they're from Montreal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I joined the band, uh, I guess the, towards the end of the year ish summer, end of the year. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been it's been really cool so far. Unfortunately, like uh, all of our plans for recording and stuff have kind of, you know, had to be put on hold because of everything that's going on right now. Um, I actually probably would have been in Montreal in the studio like right now um, oh. or just finishing up uh, with the vocals and stuff. Um, but, you know, luckily there there are still some things that can be worked on you know, uh, at a distance or whatever, like the album is, is written and finished. Uh, it's just a matter of getting it all down. And, um, again, we did have some, you know, plans for, you know, some shows as well this summer, but then uh, who knows what's going to happen with that, you know, festival, anything like that. We don't really know. So right now it's just like a matter of, you know, getting through it, trying to, you know, figure out what the, the album cycle will look like and when that will happen and that's uh that's about it and, and what drew, what drew you to them and and kind of heading in that death metal direction too because uh you know kitty at first kitty was more like a new metal kind of you know popular metal type yeah. of band like I, I you know i i remember seeing you guys with slipknot in florida like yeah. from forever ago. wild times <laughs> yeah <laughs> And uh, and then you know the the band of Kitty's music actually started evolving, getting a little heavier mm. and, yeah. and a little more progressive. And it seems like a natural direction that that you would go. But yeah. sometimes people don't go all that that route, or maybe the 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 rest of the band is the one that's pushing it. And you know, like for example, you would in your mind be like, "Nah, I want to go more softer or more electronic." Hmm. So what what kind of bands kind of influenced you to head more into the heavier and faster and darker? Of death um, well, I think you definitely uh, made a correct assumption in that, like to me, for me, it feels like the natural progression of like, you know, like, like you were saying with Kitty, you know, we did start off, you know, I guess uh, kind of new metal is like very raw and like, you know, unpolished or whatever. But by the end of like our um uh you know our our latter albums were almost kind of in that vein like you know like a more you know death metal influenced or whatever it was just kind of straightforward metal um and uh i don't know i personally for me i'm i'm drawn to not just the music but like there's a level of professionalism that i i find in the band that is something that um is very refreshing for me um, as someone who is a veteran of, of, you know, the music industry, been doing it for a really long time. It's amazing, um, you know, how pro professional they are, like, like on the business aspect of things, but also just like uh, technically as well. Um, you know, all the people in the band are fantastic musicians. Um, and I was sort of uh, brought into the fold by Justine, uh, the drummer, who is a great friend of mine. I've been friends with her for mm, almost 10 years now. Uh, and she was the drummer in a band called Blackguard, if you recall Blackguard at all. Um, and uh, yeah, she's an amazing musician and a great friend of mine. And um, they had parted ways with their previous singer, Vicky. And uh, Justine and I had sort of talked a little bit uh, after the fact about, well, you know, what they would perhaps do. And I was like, well, we could we could give it a try. It could it could definitely be something that you know I think could work out well. And um, the band talked it over, and and that was that. Um, but I mean, it's the albums that they've put out so far. It's music that I would like listen to and enjoy just 
as it is, you know, there's a lot of melodic elements and there are death metal elements uh, as well. And there are symphonic elements that I think are really cool. Um, and it's just great music, like amazing musicianship and uh, just like great people, you know, like it's, it just feels like a, a really good, a really good setup, you know, and um, yeah, like metal, that's sort of, sort of where my heart lies. And, and I've always wanted to be in a band that I maybe could just like front and not have to be tied down with my guitar. So this was a great opportunity for me to do that. And I've always wanted to do something a little, a little bit more extreme just because I feel like being untethered is something that uh, I, I really, I really enjoy. And I, I feel like once we sort of get into the swing of things with the new album and we're able to do shows and stuff, it's going to be like a, just a lot of fun. So nice. that's what, nice, that's what yeah. I'm all about these days. I just want to have fun. I just want to, you know, like make music that I enjoy listening to and that I like doing and just have fun with my friends and just party it up, have a good time. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's kind of what we have to do. Uh, yeah. You can't really lock yourself up in your house and, uh, and, uh, just worry about everything all the time like if you were yeah. to be one of those you'd just lose it you'd lose your mind uh and, sure. and creating music is something that is very therapeutic uh, i used to do yeah. it as well i mean i was in a band for 10 years and mm -hmm. i you know I, I miss it i miss and i i definitely feel that there's something missing because i'm not working on music you know yeah um and then I kind of make up for it with this because I get to talk to musicians and yeah, I get to yeah, share ideas right. and whatnot. But, yeah. but it's not the same as, as being in a band. So it's, you know, it's, it's exciting to hear that, you know, you're doing what you want to do. Uh, you're, 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 hit, you're heading in a direction musically that you wanted to go into. Because I know like Kitty Sound did evolve through time, mm -hmm. but it would, I may, it might put off some fans if you completely switch to a different type of g uh, genre all, yeah, overall, yeah. you know? If you yeah, were to like go I, straight symphonic death metal with Kitty, people would be like, wait, what? <laughs> right, exactly. Like, I feel like, I feel like the expectation and, like, the reputation, like, had its limitations. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Um, like, when people hear Kitty, uh, you know, they think one thing. And um, I feel like with a lot of our subsequent albums, like, after Spit, um, you know, we tried to push those boundaries as much as we could within the limits of Kitty. Um, mm. But you know, uh, there is also a time to step outside of that box um, for your own personal growth. You know, it, it, not only was this something that I was like, just really excited to do, but for me, it was something like I felt like I should push myself to do, um, you know, having not really worked on any project um, really other than Kitty my entire life and having a number of years where, you know, we weren't really active as a band, like we had done a number of projects in the last you know five to ten years um where you know we were still sort of in that kiddie vibe but for me this is something that's kind of freeing because i'm you know i'm not bound by that you know that name you know i'm not i'm not bound by it so it's right, uh, right. uh yeah it's just a way for me to 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 push myself and, and try some new things even though i'm just screaming into a microphone <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it, it, it it's you know it's a I used to, you know I was a vocalist in the band too so I I get that aspect of it like some musicians are like oh the, you know the the vocals aren't that I guess uh, talent heavy or whatever like you know guitar players are kind of you know the noodling yeah. if you're you know one of those bands or something but uh, I like I always had uh, internal issues dealing with the fact that people don't really pay attention to lyrics yeah <laughs> I I did but that's because I was that was my thing. Yeah, but a lot of the sure. time, like, like even my band members were like, what were you saying? Like, what are you even talking about in these songs? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't worry about it. I'm just screaming. Don't yeah, worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, I, I think with uh, with Car Chaos too, like, like the, my, the expectation with, I think, the band and also with my, within myself is to push myself, you know, beyond those boundaries, right? You know, um, so like the style, like, yeah, like I'm going to be screaming and, you know, I've done a lot of that over the years and. You know, Kitty was a metal band too, but personally, I feel like I I owe it to myself and to the band, and you know, to the band's fans. Like, because I'm new coming into this, obviously, I'm going to be bringing Kitty fans along. I hope, but like, mm -hmm. you know, I want to push myself to you know reach new levels uh, in terms of you know my screaming and also push you know the style of singing and my range and whatnot. You know, working on 
these songs, um, you know, it's still going to sound like me, but I, I feel like I, I want to be able to find a bit of a new voice as well and, and bring that to the table. So, you know, working hard on trying to, to um, improve, you know, so it's not just the same, you know? Right, right. How do you do that um, for yourself personally? Are you looking at uh, vocal lessons? Do you like, I know there's a, a teacher, I forget her name. Is it Melissa? Yeah, Melissa says, Cross. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you do that um, or do you just kind of do it at home on your own, just trying to push yourself to different limits? Um, uh, You know what? I've never actually take, I, I did take like vocal lessons for the singing side of thing, like 15 years ago. And, mm-hmm. you know, some of the techniques that I did learn, I felt uh, helped me in terms of uh, just really not injuring my voice. Mm-hmm. Um, but in, in order to, for me to feel comfortable exploring, you know, the, my, you know, my limitations and, you know, trying to get beyond those, I feel like I have to just practice a lot, you know, like in Kitty, I never, we never really, I never like really practiced a lot, mm-hmm. uh, singing wise, you know, I would just like, we would, we would, we would have band practice, but there were some times where I, I we just like played and I didn't even sing, um, mm-hmm. And so I think it's, for me, it's just like a lot of repetition, a lot of trying new things um, and just like experimenting with, you know, with my voice and, and whatnot. And uh, I think also a lot of it is really just uh, confidence in age as well. Um, you know, cause I can look back at, you know, what I sounded like and who I was, you know, in that first Kitty album and think about how like self-conscious I was you know I was a teenager and and you know I was never really that great of a singer I it was more for me about emotion and screaming into a microphone and like you know the getting the feelings out rather than you you know being pretty and uh you know doing a great job but you know as I've gotten older uh, you know and I've gained more confidence in who I am uh as a person and as an artist like I feel like that actually helps to propel me as well you know, like I know, I know I'm good, but I also know that uh, sometimes that just doesn't cut it. You got to keep, you got to keep working on it. And Car Chaos has actually pushed me uh, to do that. And I, that's also why I feel like I need this project, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to start trying to push yourself to do more low growls, like death metal low? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's one. That's one that I discovered recently uh, that I did not know I had. I, mm. I, you know, for ten years I was in the band screaming, but it was more of a high register scream. I wouldn't really yeah. go low, and yeah. then uh, I joined another band that kind of required it, mm-hmm. and and I just kept, you know, just in my living room, like, Whoa, like just trying, <laughs> you know, different <laughs> yeah. different things, and eventually it got to the point where I felt comfortable pushing that out, um, mm. you know, from your gut and everything, just kind of. And having it be loud because, you know, some people yeah. see you'll see like young kids in, you know, doing videos online where they're just like, ooh, and it's yeah. all fake and just kind of they're holding it here. And it's yeah. like, no, you need to project. Um, exactly. So it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to hear uh, where you go in terms of, of lower registers. Yeah. Like I, I have like kind of just my like natural, like kind of in the middle and like, mm-hmm. you know, Unfortunately, I was born a, a small woman, so there's only it can only go so low. You know, sometimes I just I wish I had a man's voice. I could just get like a transplant and just like get some like corpse grinder. Oh my goodness! Like well, you need just a, ne- a put neck that in here. Yeah, big. I know. I would need like yeah, a n- neck surgery as well for that in order to fit it all in there. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, like so. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hopefully be trying some new stuff, and you know, I, I want to try some lows and some highs, and um, yeah, just I think it'll be, it'll be, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I also, I also saw you're working on something called Winter Lust. Or winter, yes. Yeah, yes. Winter Lust. Winter Lust. Yeah. Um. So that actually is uh, another project that I've been keeping very close. Uh, my cards very close. Um, because it's taken so long for this album to be finished, but uh, it's also a project with Justine uh, ATA, okay. who is in Car Chaos, also was in Blackguard, and uh, Jo Fran- Francois Leduc, who runs a studio that um, Silverwing Studio uh, in Montreal, where 
um, like Blackguard recorded and whatnot. And Winterlust is like something that uh, the three of us have been working on for probably, oh geez, it's been like f at least five, six years. Um, and uh, it just kind of started off with like an idea to try something kind of electronic and different. Um, and we ended up doing an entire album uh, and it's completely like, it's like really kind of dark, kind of synth wave, really very moody and kind of chill. Um, and that's something that uh, we were like, okay, like we have all the artwork, everything's ready, but then it's like, okay, well this, um, you know, the virus stuff kind of happened and it's like, well, then we can't get together for a photo shoot. We can't get together to maybe do a video and all that stuff. So things, some things are on hold. Um, but that's a that's an album that uh, because it is all like a very electronic and whatnot. I don't know how much like you know touring or how many shows that we could do, but it's it's something that is a passion project of mine, and we've been working on it for a really long time. So it's like completely, completely the least metal thing ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard cool. a clip of it. I heard a clip of it. It's pretty good. I, it, you know, John Carpenter ish. You know, you... yeah. Yeah, you, you, it it shows that old school horror uh, influence that you have because you know, yeah, it's interesting sure. that a lot of metalheads kind of are attracted to that world. Like a, a lot of mm. my metal dudes, like Municipal Waste guys, and, and and like you know dudes that are really into metal, um, also they'll they'll hit me up with like, hey, check out check this out, and it's a it's just keyboards. I'm like. Okay. Yeah, this is cool. I, I like yeah. it too. It's it falls into the you know I'm trying to think of a like Carpenter Brute, which is obviously yeah. John Carpenter influence. Love, yeah. Um, yeah, I love Carpenter Brute. That's yeah. That yeah, per, kind of perturbator. Like, <laughs> yeah, very very cool as well. Yeah. Um, you know, Dance with the Dead. Yeah. Another yeah, amazing yeah, yeah. band. Um, but so yeah, it does kind of fall in in line with that but i i feel like it is it is like a little bit more laid back like there's no like bands like dance with the dead like there are guitars in in the music and whatnot and we don't really have any of that so um yeah it's just like something uh symphonic and um cinematic very much so there's a lot of strings as well a lot of symphony stuff in there um definitely uh lots of movie type influences whether it be like you said john carpenter or just you know um uh like the the music just like that would be in the background of any any movie that you might be like well that's kind of that's kind of interesting you know it's just very um emotional and evocative yeah cool i i also have here if you if you wanted to give us uh like a top five m movies horror movies that you would watch during this uh during the quarantine like what, what are the <gasps> top five that you have to watch all right top five okay um well recently i actually thought about doing about a top five uh so i think off the top of my head um it would be um return of the living dead okay which is uh uh one of my favorite movies uh that one is it's it's kind of funny it's kind of silly, but yeah. it's, uh, it's a good is that one. The one. Is um, that the one where they have the, the, the kids are at the graveyard, uh, like, messing around, or is that... There's like punk, of... Yeah, there's like a bunch of punks and stuff, and they yeah. are at, at a graveyard, and uh, Linnea Quigley takes her tits out, and it gets wild, and <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, so um, that is the one I remember. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that and with the tar man, you know, like the guy that he was in the drum or whatever, and he comes out and he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember yes. that, yeah. yeah. So that is uh, essential. Um, the uh, Night of the Living Dead remake, uh, the 1990, I believe, okay. version. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was directed, I think Tom Savini directed it. Um, that's one of my favorite movies as well. Um, Tony Todd is in it. It's like incredible. It's uh, the special effects are Tom Savini, of course, so amazing. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite movies, uh, horror movies of all time, to watch. Uh, Halloween three. Do you okay. know how that movie is crazy? 
I uh, don't remember it. I mean, I'm okay. pretty sure I watched it, but I don't remember. Yeah, so Halloween down. 3 is the one where it doesn't make any sense with the rest of the franchise. Like, Michael Myers is not in it at all. Um, <laughs> it's so bonkers. Uh, because apparently, originally, the idea was uh, that, you know, Halloween was going to be, um, like, each movie was going to be, like, its own Halloween-themed thing, right? And so Halloween 1 and 2 were sort of together as one, and then Halloween 3 was going to be the first one that's going to start that trend where then Halloween 4 might be about witches, or Halloween 5 might be about, you know... Oh, goblins okay. Not, or something right like American so, yeah, horror be, story kind of yeah exactly exactly yeah. and so uh halloween 3 has tom atkins in it and it's just about um i, I guess that they're like druids or evil irish guys or whatever they run a mask factory and they have robots also that kill people but so they're creating masks that kill children so okay. Halloween masks. So yeah, like you go and all these kids are going to like put their masks on because there's like an advertisement that says, put your masks on kids. It's time for the big giveaway. And they put all their, like they, these kids are putting their masks on thinking there's going to be like a prize or something. And it just like, it transmits something that melts their heads. <laughs> it's fucking insane. It's probably one of the best movies ever. I need to rewatch that. I need to rewatch yeah. that then. No, it's I don't a lot remember of fun. any of it. <laughs> yeah, and and after it, it just ends up being like, uh, okay, so the movie, yeah, like the movie uh, has become a cult classic, but I don't think it did nearly as well. And so after that, they just kind of swept it under the rug and were like, we're going to bring Michael Myers back for the next <laughs> one. But as a standalone movie, it's fantastic because it's just so insane. Um, okay. So yeah, definitely give it a watch. Uh, so that's three. Uh, Fright Night, I'm going to say, uh, is one of my favorite horror movies. Everybody yeah. loves Jerry Dandridge, um, his seductive sweater, you know, everything about him <laughs> is amazing. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think, uh, what else? Um, well, maybe this one isn't horror, but I'll, Rotor, I think. I'll put that one out there. That is a, it's not horror, but it's awful. Rotor? Um, Rotor. It's about, it's kind of like a bad, like Terminator Robocop ripoff. Uh, it's, oh. on, it's available on YouTube. So if you're curious, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the Blu-ray rip. Um, it's really bad, but it's just entertaining. So much fun. I love it. Okay. And that's okay. five. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, I'll check yeah. that out for sure. For sure. Have, you seen rub have you seen Rubber? Uh, that's the one with the tire, right? The murderous <laughs> tire? Yeah, I did see that. I saw that, uh, well, I guess around the time that it came out. That was a long time ago. But yeah, no, I've seen that. It's weird, right? That the main character is an inanimate object. And somehow they made a tire have a personality. Yeah. Yeah. It shows It shows that it's it's not just uh, the acting uh, that's mm. involved. Like, you production wise or writing wise like you, you can make it happen i mean it's absurd obviously a tire that has uh, telekinetic powers or whatever mm -hmm. to blow up things but i don't know i watched i think when i was getting a tattoo and i was just like what is happening on the screen right now yeah and it, it, it was is great. uh it is it's a really fun movie it's it's interesting it's been a long time since i've seen it but maybe i'll maybe i'll need to give it a rewatch at some point Cool, cool. Well, uh, that's that's all I have. I mean, I, I you know I know we're busy. You got stuff going on. You got so many projects. You know, between Car Chaos and Winterlust and your podcast. And I mean, yeah, is 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 are are you? I mean, I know you've said it before in other interviews that you know doing Kitty is not really something you're looking into doing uh, anymore. Uh, but never say never. But you know, has that changed a little bit since that interview, or have you, you know, looked into maybe doing more Kitty down the road, or is that done? Um, you know, I'll, I'll never, I'll never say it's done because that's I just, that's just not, you know, the way that I feel like it works. Um, you know, like we have done a lot of kitty projects in the last little while, you know, with the documentary that came out. Um, and then we also did, um, the live, uh, at the London music hall as well. Mm. Um, which, was a part of like that whole thing and like that was a project that literally took so much time it took like from start to finish the documentary it was like about five years it's wow. an incredible you know incredible amount of um money and work and then when it came down to everything you know just like you know just all the little details you just realize how much goes into 
a, you know, a documentary or making a movie. I couldn't even imagine, you know? Um, so that kind of tired me out a little bit, but, you know, as far as music is concerned, you know, that's something that I, I would never say that it's never going to happen. It's just, I think that there's going to have to be something that, that kind of comes along that sort of maybe inspires us all to sort of get together, uh, and whatnot to, um, to, you know, even, you know, do one song or, or whatever. Um, and in which configuration, who knows as well, right? Because, you know, there are a lot of uh, people who have been in the band, like currently, I guess, technically, it's just Tara and Mercedes and I that are in the band. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, like, I, like I said, uh, you know, never say never, but things, things are still where they, where they were at that point. Right. Yeah, nothing's yeah, really Right, right before the whole quarantine situation, there was a lot of bands doing um, like reunion, not reunions, but like uh, anniversary shows, like mm -hmm. you know, 20, 20th anniversary of this album or, you know, yeah. is that something that you ever even considered like going back and doing a, like an anniversary show for the first album or? Um, well, I mean, this year is the 20th anniversary of Spit. So okay. if we were going to get it done, it would need to be pretty quick. Um, <laughs> But I mean, technically the show that we did at the premiere for the documentary in 2017 was our uh, anniversary, like anniversary of the band, 20th anniversary show. And that show we had uh, like a number of different incarnations. We had the original Kitty lineup play, um, you know, a set, um, you know, the Oracle, um, you know, the, you know, I failed you and in the black, um, so like, that was like a, a, a huge, huge thing. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. Um, probably not for now. Yeah. Not in the, yeah. not in the, not in the near future anyway. Yeah. 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 I mean, we'll see. Time will tell. Cool. Well, yeah. uh, let, let's, let's plug, uh, plug away all the different things. I mean, do you have a, a social media for winter lust? Uh, there actually is a okay. uh, an Instagram. Okay. Uh, that's it's just Winterlust Band, I think. No, it's just w at Winterlust on Instagram, so you can follow. Uh, and is, uh, really... is, is the the U in Lust? Is it a V? Because it looks yes. like a V. Okay. It is. All right, so yes. Winterlust with a V instead of a U in the Lust. Okay. Y yes. Yeah. Right. And so um, when whenever we do start, you know, putting up you know teaser videos and whatnot, that's gonna go there, I guess, for now. Um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully new music for that project soon. Uh, Car Chaos is just uh, on Instagram, Car Chaos Official. Uh, and also do a search on Facebook. We're there as well, just Car Chaos. Uh, Kitty, of course, is Official Kitty on Instagram. And Kitty Page on uh, Facebook. I don't know, we did it in 2007, so it was the <laughs> Kitty Page. Um, and Witch Finger Horror Podcast uh, uh, is just which finger podcast on instagram and then you can search on facebook as well and we also have witchfinger.com uh, which is where you can get all of our episodes uh as well as we are available on um, spotify and stitcher and uh, itunes you guys have merch right you have like shirts and everything yeah or? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah we do have we have witch finger stuff um and uh there are some kitty stuff, but right now, unfortunately, there's some weird stuff going on with the merch because our uh, the the guy who does our fulfillment and prints all of our stuff, um, he's had some problems getting uh, a lot of his products and like uh, blanks and stuff like that because his suppliers have shut down because of COVID. So right. um, unfortunately, there's not uh, I don't think a lot going on right now with with the merch, but uh, you know there is a, a kitty merch. Uh, page and also witch finger as well um that is linked to you know the websites and whatnot so you can check it out and see if there's anything there it's all strange times <laughs> well uh i i'm you know i appreciate you taking time to do this uh i i hope that people listening are uh checking everything out i hope that you're staying yeah, safe i know good. you're 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 a big proponent uh for for you know being healthy and yeah and being out there and exercising i've been actually increasing my my uh my workout regimen here in the quarantine which i didn't expect you know i realized yeah. that was one of the things like one of the reasons i don't work out all the time is because i'm busy i'm always out and i'm always doing something but now that i'm here why not you know just get Absolutely. get healthy 
I think that's the best way to fight a virus, right? Just be healthy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's great. It's great for, for your mental health too. It's like, if you're stuck inside all day and like, you know, even if you're like moving around, even just like, you know, in the living room or your bedroom, or if you have like a garage or whatever, just doing something like that is going to help to take your mind off, you know, the stress of what's going on in the outside world, you know, mental health, all that. It's all, it all sort of ties together. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Like I, I was saying, I, 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 you know, I didn't realize at the time when I was a kid that you guys were the same age as I was when yeah. I was watching you. <laughs> yeah. You know? we, like it, it never registered crazy. in my brain that, you know, you were, you were in Kitty when you were like a, like 15, 16. Yeah. How old were you? Yeah. Um, I was 17. Uh, 17 I was okay. the oldest at 17. So, uh, my sister was 15 and, uh, Fallon and Selena were 16. So yeah crazy crazy times crazy crazy so yeah. i like i said I, I i enjoyed you guys you know during that time and, and and after i appreciate you uh taking time to do this so cheers absolutely thank you so so much it's been awesome and uh yeah we'll talk again one day i'm sure for sure stay safe you too bye cheers